How many of you have ever lived with an engineer? So I hear some chuckles, I see some nudges. Well, my dad is a retired mathematical or mechanical engineer, and my children and my nieces sometimes joke around that when you ask Papa what time it is, he tells you about the mechanics of a clock. So I was raised in this world of asking why and finding information and understanding and, and really digging deeply into ideas. And that has really framed who I am, both professionally and personally. We had our family down for Thanksgiving um, last year, and I wanted to lay a hardwood floor. And I was really excited about it, and I asked some white questions, and I asked my husband and my dad how I should go about doing it, and um, it was really cool because there was a lot of geometry involved, and so I laid that floor. It looked awesome, and I loved the nail gun, and I stained it beautiful, and then I thought, I'm just going to put that polyurethane on, and I forgot to ask Dad and my husband why I should not put the polyurethane on two days before Thanksgiving, and I went ahead and slathered that stuff on there, and I found out really quickly why you don't do that, because the house just reeked of chemicals. And fortunately, it was Thanksgiving, so that turkey smell kind of wiggled its way in a little bit, but uh, it was still there. But I learned a lot, and I learned some things about how to lay a hardwood floor, and I'm going to do it again. Uh, I also, in that same event, um, I, I built a table. You know those tables that come in like, like the flat cardboard boxes with the really long instructions on how to put it together? So I put that table together. I did not understand why A had to go to B, but I read the directions and that's what it told me to do, so that's what I did. And it turned out okay, but I don't know how to build tables anymore. I, I just built that one. That's the difference between a task and doing something for understanding. So, like I said, I'm, I'm an academic. I teach teachers how to teach mathematics. I, I've waited a little while to bring that in because I know that kind of gives some people some funny feelings. Um, but mathematics is a creative adventure. I know you don't believe me right now, but just stay with me for a little bit. It's really creative. It's inventive. You're all mathematicians, right? All mathematicians, you are all mathematicians. It's just that when we think about mathematics, we don't think about creativity. We think about algorithms. So 34, we're just going to look at this, 34 times 29. We all know how to do this, or at least we have some inkling about remembering about how we would go about doing this. So 9 times 4, we all know is 36. You're saying it's super shy, just in case you didn't remember that one. <laughs> 9 times 3 is 27. For some magical reason, we add those 3 on there, and we get 30. And then here's that magic zero that your third grade teacher told you always has to go there. We don't know why. We just know that he or she knows, knows what she's talking about. 4 times 2 we know is 8, and 2 times 3 we know is 6. So then we know we get 986. So much fun. Right? No, I love mathematics. This is not fun. So, but what's really cool and really fun is how you get to this thing, how we get to this algorithm. So let's talk a little bit about the whys. Why does that thing work? So we have to first understand what it means. So it really means 34 groups of 29. 34 groups of 29. That's accessible. We can all do that. So let's see, 29. 29, 29, 29, 29, 29. I'm not gonna make you sit through all that. But here we go, we have our 34 groups of 29. Now, this isn't that easy to do either. So in mathematics, because it's this creative adventure, we can split things up in a mathematically legal way. So let's say we have 30 of them up here. That means we have 30 nines, like this, and we have 30 twenties, right? We can see that when you put all those things together. Now, that's what's called a, a friendly number. Numbers are friendly, and some of them are mean. 
we have four down here. That's a pretty friendly number. So that means we have four nines and four twenties. All right, all right, we can get there. So we can see what this looks like. So with, with understanding, we understand why this is happening. Let's go just a little bit further. And remember that hardwood floor that I laid. Um, we know a lot of us have uh, either had to take measurements for carpeting or do something where you had to figure out that area that's inside of that space of the rectangle. So I'm going to use an idea, and again, just like we did before, I'm going to break these into nice, friendly numbers. So if we do this, then we know that if we want to find this space in between here, we have 30 times 20, which is 600. 4 times 20 is 80. 4 times 9 is 36. And 30 times 9, we know, is 270. Hmm, those numbers are starting to look a little bit familiar. So this is another way to think about it. This is another way to be invited in to this world of mathematics. And then lastly, 34 times 29. You never knew that 34 times 29 could be this fun, did you? So we know that nine groups of four, you had it the first time, is 36. And nine groups of 30 is 270. And I'm going to write this down. Don't freak out. It's legal to do it this way. And then we have 20 times 4 is 80. And 20 times 3 is 600. Look at that. Same thing. Here's the cool part. Not that that other part was not cool enough. Let's look at this now. So we have a 36 here, a 36 here, and a 36 here. Where is it here on this algorithm? Here it is. Six, and that's where that three comes from. That comes from that 36. And it makes it more efficient when we do it this way. But here's the whys. We're, we have to talk about the whys. So now we have a 270 there, a 270 there, a 270 there. I don't see a 270 there, but we know that 27 and 3 is 30. So that's that. And then we have an 80, an 80 and an 80, and there's that 80 right there in that algorithm. Finally, we have a 600, a 600, and 600 right there, and there it is. So that algorithm comes from a real understanding of how multiplication works, what the pieces and the parts do when they work together. And here's the really important piece. Look at this. Remember the zero that we all knew that you had to put there or else you'd get in trouble? It comes from here. All of these are zeros. It's always going to be all zeros right there. And that's where that comes from. So when we learn about things from an understanding perspective, we're able to create and blend and mix ideas. That's what mathematics is. You are all mathematicians. You are all able and capable to mix these ideas together if we only ask the why questions. Why are these things working? Because when you know how they're working and why they're working, you can blend them in all kinds of ways. Mathematics is a creative adventure. It's something that we need our next generation to really understand because our problems nowadays are complex. And it's complex, more complex than a task. A task is putting together the table and the box. Understanding is laying the hardwood floor. Understanding is understanding this mathematics so we can blend and mix it all together. You are mathematicians. You do it all the time. You do it with scheduling. You do it with determining logical solutions to problems that are in your life. You do it in budgeting. Some of us are a little bit more creative with budgeting than others. But we do it all the time. And just imagine if we take that same idea of asking why about other things in our world. Imagine if we really understood about food and nutrition. We wouldn't have to rely on packaging to tell us that something's healthy. We could look at the label and say, yeah, I, I think I want to buy that. It gives us independence, and independence is good for all of us. 
we really have to dig deeply into these why questions, not only for mathematics, because mathematics is fun, but for our world, for our culture. Imagine what we would be like, how we could solve more problems if we asked more why questions about public policy, asked more why questions about cultures, ideas, the arts. Imagine what we could do together with these ideas that we can put together, create, innovate, explore. And remember though, that when you ask why, tone is important. So why did you do that is not the same thing as why did you do that? Let's ask the why questions. Let's get to be creative, innovative problem solvers in mathematics, but in our culture and in our world and address these really complex problems with a really good understanding. Thank you.